In this project, we're going to use CorelDRAW almost exclusively to prepare a photograph for laser engraving. Let me explain what I have. I have already knocked out the background of a photograph, and I have this green oval behind it just so I can show you that there is no background. We've already knocked out the background and pasted that into Corel Draw just as a place to begin. So we're not going to explain in this project how to knock out the background. See other tutorials for that project. We're going to do this both on a dark background like black marble or black brass, also on a white background. So to begin with, I'm going to just label this page. This page one, we're going to put that on a dark background. We're going to, so the first thing we're going to do, we want it to be larger on this page. So we never ever inside CorelDRAW grab a corner and rescale it. Instead, we use the much more sophisticated tools to resample that. So I want that to be about three and a half inches tall. And I already have this photograph at 200 dpi. I intend to engrave this at 200 dpi, so I want the dpi or the resolution to be 200 dpi also. If it hadn't been, I would change it here. And then we'll OK that. We'll be sure that's in the center of the page, and it is. And then uh, we're going to copy this, edit and copy. We're going to create a second page so we can, in one document, have both our light background and our dark background. So we'll edit and paste. And this is going to be our light background. We're going to go back to page one. And we're going to work on the dark background first. Let's think black marble here. So for black marble, we're actually going to have to use Corel Photo Paint to handle that. So I'm going to select my photograph and click on Edit Bitmap on the property bar. So here we are inside Corel Photo Paint. Notice the transparent background. That's what the gray checkerboard indicates. Actually, we created this in the beginning in Corel Photo Paint. Much easier to knock out the background there than it would be in Corel Draw. But here we are ready to proceed. The real purpose for coming over here, that which we can't do, or I can't think of a way to do it in Corel Draw, is to put that background black so that when we invert it, it'll be white, as we would need it on black marble or black brass. But since we're here in Corel Photo Paint, we're going to do almost everything right here. So when we hand it back to Corel Draw, it'll be ready to print. Reminding you, we have already resampled it. If we hadn't, we'd resample it as our first step. But we did that in Draw. And then I'm going to call your attention to these three icons right down here. If we hold our mouse over those, we'll see that we have uh, the, the first one is the foreground color. Next one is a background color, and finally the paint or the fill color. We need this to be black. It already is, but just to illustrate, if we wanted it to be white, we would drag white from the color bar and put on that. So notice now, just for illustration, we have both the background and the foreground colors in white. But we're not concerned particularly now about the foreground color, but we do want that background black. So we're going to grab the black icon and drag it and put it on here so that when we merge this with the background it'll be black. At that point we're going to go straight to black and white. We do that by going to image and in Corel Photo Paint X3 there's actually a top level menu item for convert to black and white. Some of the other ones, previous versions, you would go to mode and then select convert black and white. Principle is the same. I'm going to click on convert to black and white. A little warning comes up that recommends merging all the objects with the background. We should flatten it first. I normally do that, so I'm going to tell it yes. 
And now we're in the convert to one bit or convert to black and white dialog. And typically here I zoom in on a critical part. Let's look in this case at the uh, lady's face. And then we're going to convert that to one of these three, either Jarvis, Stuckey, or Floyd Steinberg. And at this point we decide whether we're going to marble or black brass. And what we want for black brass, excuse me, what we want for black, let's think black marble. And black marble would be best with the coarser of the patterns available. Let's check Jarvis, Stuckey, Floyd Steinberg. And it looks to me like probably Floyd Steinberg. Let's take one more look at Stuckey. Yep, I like Floyd Steinberg there, so we'll OK that. I'm going to call your attention also that I normally leave the intensity at 100. We might knock that back a little in some cases, but we don't want to take it back so far that we start getting bright spots in here. Let's illustrate. Let's drop it off back here. Do you know this? You notice here we have no specks in here at all, so we're creating a shiny spot that'll be uh, pretty obvious. So let's put it back over at 100, which is normally where you'll have your best results. And let's OK that. So that converted it to black and white with a black background. And let's go as far as we can in Corel Photo Paint. So we now need to invert that. And that is under Image transform and invert. Again, that's an X3. Look for it a little in a little different place in Corel 12 and earlier. But that converts it or inverts the black and white. So we're through with that. I'm going to exit out of Corel Photo Paint. It should come back and ask me if I want to save that. And if I say yes, it should throw those changes back to CorelDRAW. So there, we're basically ready to engrave that to a piece of black marble. It is my convention, just because I have a better feel for it, to click on the No Fill. That's the X at the top of the color bar. Left click on that. We'll do away with that white box around that. It really has nothing to do with whether or not it would engrave in this case. We just have a little better feel of what we have. Now we're going to go to page two. We want to see if this might look better on white marble or white over black plastic or possibly uh, alder wood. So actually we can do this, I believe, without going to photo paint at all. Reminding you that we resample this before we pasted it into page two, so we do not need to resample it. Actually, all we need to do is convert this to black and white. So let's select it. We're going to go to bitmaps and mode and black and white. In this case, we are going to put white on uh, put black dots on dark, so we want as much detail as we can. So there's Jarvis. Again, I normally look at the three of them. Let's, let's look at another critical part of this. There's Stucky and Floyd Steinberg. But I think I liked Jarvis. A little few more dots there. And uh, again, I'm using 100% intensity. Let's OK that. And actually we're ready to engrave here. Once again, I normally click left click on the None Fill, No Fill button at the top of your color bar. That'll take that background on and give us a little better uh, look at what we'll get.